Hey guys, welcome to Research Friday. I'm Dr. Moll. I'm Dr. Crisp. And today we're just going to review an article from a peer-reviewed journal. And, and really the purpose of this is to assess the clinical evidence that's available to us and see if we can line that up with our clinical experience or even mm -hmm. enhance our clinical experience. Absolutely. And if you'd like to check out the article, just check the link below. We've got another article we're talking about. I like it. Today uh, it's titled Effectiveness of Nerve Gliding Exercises on Carpal Tunnel Syndrome. A systematic review. Okay. So carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, for, for those in the conservative profession, mm -hmm. chiropractors, physical therapists, it's actually a pretty good condition to be able to manage. It, yeah, absolutely it is. Um, yeah. One that can sometimes be managed conservatively when you have the right diagnosis. That's the key. Um, but there are some challenges to managing carpal tunnel syndrome effectively. I know when I learned mm -hmm. some of the aspects of how to manage carpal tunnel, um, they seem to be pretty cutting edge, and I remember giving them to patients and then sometimes finding out, like, man, why is this not resolving? I, I swear I have the right diagnosis. Absolutely. I did everything right. Yeah. I, I, I looked at the, the studies. You know, I had looked at the test. It seemed like the right diagnosis. Why wasn't it getting the outcome I wanted? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so this is a nice review. Uh, it's a great review. I liked it. So what were some of the, uh, the, the things that you came across that you liked in this the main, the main thing that I liked about it is that a lot of people, like the definition of carpal tunnel syndrome, it's a group of symptoms, and they would have the classic signs in the three fingers. If it's in the over in the other fingers, uh, it's probably not carpal yeah. tunnel. But one thing they talked about is that you need to check the whole chain. You just can't look at pain in the wrist. If you just look at pain in the wrist, it could be in the forearm, it could be in the bicep, it could be in the pec, it could be in the neck. Big time. Yeah. So I liked how they looked at the whole chain. That's what I took out of it. And then also, when you look at some of the conservative care that they did, such as you manipulation and then ultrasound and all those different aspects, um, I liked how they looked at it in a broad fashion. That, that's what I, I really liked about it. Yeah, so when we actually get down to nerve gliding exercises, I think yes. there's some variability when, when we look at and understand nerve gliding exercises. Um, I mm -hmm. remember tendon gliding exercises and nerve gliding exercises yep. that focus specifically on just, just the, wrist. the wrist itself. Yeah. You know, you'd always have patients do these little things or stretch out and mm -hmm. hold and, and those things. And, and that's <clears> kind <throat> of what we're looking at here. And according to this, as a entity on their own, mm, not very effective. Not very effective at all. So what once was, hey, Here's your handout of all your hand positions, if yeah, you remember me, that. Let, yeah, let me print it out. Here yeah. you go. Absolutely. All those hand positions they had to go through, all the stretches they had to go through in different positions. Yep. That alone is not a beneficial component no. to managing carpal tunnel syndrome. No, it's not. When we look at just nerve gliding exercises. Absolutely. In fact, when you look at it, if when they, they actually state in here that if you did your conservative with those, you didn't get results. Most times, just don't even do them. Mm -hmm. You have to look at the whole chain, yeah, which is great. Yeah, so some of the things that were impactful and, and where we could probably add in the new aged version of nerve gliding exercises, which mm -hmm. would be actually starting from the cervical spine Absolutely. throughout the shoulder complex all Absolutely. the way down into the wrist. If Absolutely. you added those in with traditional conservative care, the results according to this study was a little bit more favorable. Absolutely. Uh, and so some of those forms of conservative care they had mentioned would be your corrective splinting. Yep had some benefits, mm -hmm. um, and, and then your traditional forms of therapy. Yes. Um, as you already mentioned, but then they even added in, no matter what your mix is conservatively, there is a, super, a, a group of patients that actually are going to have a poor prognosis. Yeah, and if we look at who those people are, it actually says age, symptom duration. So when we talk about age, we need to talk about comorbid conditions such as thyroid issues, yeah. high blood pressure, you know, I call it the beatus. Yep. Diabetes. Diabetes. The, the beatus. The beatus. If that's where your history has to come in. If you do not take a good history and you do not pay attention to that, when you set your expectations of care with the patient, you could be setting yourself up for a problem. Most definitely. Absolutely. I mean, I just got a case this week from a provider uh, asking about a case, and in the history, it was the minute they re vamp the thyroid medication symptomatology went away absolutely. for a few weeks absolutely uh, so yes there, there are um, important key aspects to comorbidities with carpal tunnel syndrome absolutely so the biggest takeaway today uh, with this and how we might be able to implement it into our 
patient-centered care mm -hmm. is really focusing on the global aspect of carpal tunnel syndrome rather than focusing on just exactly where it's happening. Right? Absolutely. Glo global, whole, whole chain, but also uh, history. History is important. And, and co-management. You've got to be able to co-manage, especially if they've got high blood pressure, uh, the betas, or thyroid issues. You have to. I mean, if, that, if you're going to put that patient care center first. True. Hey, thanks for joining us for another Research Friday. I'm Dr. Mall. I'm Dr. Crisp. And if you want to reference the article we just reviewed, check out the link below. And we'll see you next Friday. Next Friday. I'm, I'm always watching it. See, the thing is, is that we watch each other, and I can't watch you. And I'm like, see you next Friday. All right.